You're watching the best place for news in the best place on earth. Now, Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 10. Good evening, I'm Dave McElhatton. And I'm Ana Chavez. Two serious threats are facing the Bay Area tonight. One is the growing menace to San Francisco Bay and coastal beaches from the oil spill we first reported two days ago. The other is a health scare forcing the recall of a Bay Area original product that has become a popular craze. Odwalla juices are linked to serious bacterial outbreaks. At least 13 people in Washington state have come down with a potentially deadly illness. Health officials there have confirmed 10 of the cases were caused by this apple juice drink made by Odwalla. Channel 5's Tweed Vu has the latest on the recall ordered this evening from Odwalla headquarters in Half Moon Bay. Hold on, I'll try that line again. Hold on, please. The phones are ringing off the hook tonight at Adwala headquarters in Half Moon Bay. People wanting more information on E. coli bacteria. Health officials in Washington state are linking 10 cases of E. coli contamination to Adwala fruit juice. The uh, unpasteurized apple juice that is uh, produced by this supplier and is also included in other brands of Odwalla fruit juices, uh, we believe are responsible for uh, the cases of E. coli that we have been able to identify. Tonight, Adwalla is recalling all fresh apple juice and all products containing fresh apple juice as an ingredient. That includes the popular sea monster. E. coli is commonly associated with cattle. The company can only speculate on how the bacteria might have gotten into its products. Fresh fruit uh, and produce um, that may be anywhere near uh, cattle manure um, is subject to that risk as far as we understand. The national recall affects thousands of bottles. The company isn't sure how many exactly, but the Bay Area is disproportionately affected. Would you say that the Bay Area is the biggest market for Adwala products? You're based here. Um, this is the first market that we've been in and we've grown up here, so uh, yes, I, I think it is. The E. coli in question is the same strain that killed three children and sickened hundreds in Washington three years ago. That outbreak was traced to undercooked jack-in-the-box hamburgers. E. coli can cause abdominal cramps, severe diarrhea, and liver problems. Health officials are issuing warnings. Do not drink unpasteurized products, be they fruit juices, milk, or milk products. This continues to be a risk not only for E. coli, but for other organisms that can be transmitted as well. Um, likewise, E. coli can continue to be found in un- or undercooked meat. Here's a list of the recalled Adwala products. Again, it's not only the apple juice, but all flavors containing apple juice. And again, just to remind you, this is what the fresh apple juice looks like. If you have it, throw it out. And uh, for now, other Adwala products like the spring water is not being recalled. It is, we're told, still safe to buy. The company has set out its products for uh, testing for E. coli and should have the results by tomorrow. And by the way, we will have those recalled products for you again later in the newscast. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Tui Vu, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Tui. Well, the recall is big news tonight, but has the news filtered down to the stores where people in the Bay Area are buying their groceries? Channel 5's Doug Murphy did some shopping in Oakland, and he joins us now live with the results. Doug? Anna, buyers really need to be aware. About an hour and a half ago, we went into the Safeway behind me here in Oakland, and we bought these two products. They are, while not the uh, complete apple juice, there is a strawberry banana smoothie and the Mo Beta, but both do contain apple juice. Both are on the recall list. They should have been off the store shelves. We told the manager here he got them off. But it takes the recall a little while to circulate. So shoppers, people at home, you got to look at what you're buying in the store, got to look at what you have at home. And if it has the apple juice in it, don't use it. We talked to some shoppers here who said if this stuff would have been on the shelves and they wanted it, could have been a problem. Have you heard about the, the, the recall with the, the yeah. apple juices? No. Um, they've recalled because of a problem with E. coli. Would you expect these products, uh, strawberry or Mo Beta, would you expect them? No. And if you saw them on the shelves, what might you do if you liked it? I'd buy it. 
I mean, if there, you're saying there's a problem with Could, the bacteria in this, well, then I wouldn't yeah. buy it. But I mean, I if you saw it on the shelf, you, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't think so, no. I wouldn't think it was just meat products or something. But it's still on store shelves? I mean, is that confusing to, to people? Oh, uh, yeah, I think it is. If it has that problem, they should just pull it all off the shelves, you know, and get to the bottom and see what the problem is. I mean, if you looked at something that said strawberry banana smoothie, you might not think apple juice immediately. Exactly, exactly. Right. So the onus on the shopper or on the person at home right here, check the little spot down in there. That's where the ingredients is. And clearly in there, it does say apple juice. Clearly that's on the recall. So it's apple juice, Adwala apple juice, and any of the uh, products that do contain the apple juice. Could take a while for this recall to completely circulate. That's a story in Oakland. Doug Murphy, Channel 5, Eyewitness News. Thank you, Doug. E. coli poisoning is not that uncommon. In Washington State alone last year, 140 cases were reported. Channel 5's Dr. Nancy Steinerman says it can crop up in virtually any food product. You can have E. coli contamination of any food product, any place. All it really signifies is fecal contamination of a food product. People don't wash their hands, slaughtering animals, and then having the entrails contaminate food. So it's not even that far-fetched to consider that some beverages could be uh, contaminated. And it really comes down to sanitary conditions and inspections. There are precautions you can take to avoid E. coli or most other types of food poisoning. One is to thoroughly cook meat before you eat it. Heat, not cold, kills bacteria. Washing your hands as well as fruits and vegetables before eating them will also prevent illness. And medical experts say avoid drinking unpasteurized liquids. You take a risk when you consume unpasteurized products. The Trends Research Institute reports that 9,000 people from foodborne illnesses died from foodborne illnesses in 1995, and contaminated food also made 7 million of us sick. Anna? The E. coli problem has other strong ties to the Bay Area. Not only is the juice company based here, but a possible victim lives in the East Bay. Channel 5's Robert Honda is live in Hayward now with that part of the story. Robert? Well, Anna, as you know, the Bay Area and Seattle are connected quite a bit. There are a lot of flights going to and from that area, and so a lot of people could have been in that area during that time. We know of one woman that was. You heard that most of the victims are from the Washington State area. The woman we talked to tonight was visiting that area during all this commotion, and she ended up here at the emergency room at a hospital in Hayward drinking and walla. Now is she a victim and are there others? Well getting ill might be the way they're going to find out. Gigi Demera says she spent most of the evening feeling sick. She came back from visiting her father near Seattle today and drank an Adwala strawberry juice containing apple juice at the Seattle airport. After a few hours she claims she began feeling ill and she says it kept getting worse. I drank a, f a big one. I usually have them for breakfast. I like them a lot. You drink it wall all the time? Yes. And the gas station right down the street has them. And I, I have them all the time. Have you ever had any kind of effect from it before? Never. Never, ever. And you think that this time you did? Yeah, I've been ill all day. It's not like me not to eat. Mm -hmm. What about <laughs> the physical effects? What kind of symptoms? Um, very bad diarrhea and stomach cramps. Shortly after our interview, Gigi decided to go to the emergency room at St. Rose Hospital. How are you feeling right now? Sick. Very, I have bad stomach cramps, upper and lower. I don't know, I'm not feeling well. Headache. You feel noticeably worse than you did just an hour ago? Mm-hmm. Who knows how consumers are going to react to the news. Do you plan to continue to drink Adwala? Do you blame Never. them? Never. Why not? Because I don't, I don't like to be ill. I'll never have it again. Even though it was one of your favorites for a while? For a long time, yeah. No, I'll go back to Gatorade or, or something else. Faith's kind of shook, huh? Oh, very. All it takes is once with me. Well, a lot of people might react that way. We just talked to Gigi Demera. She was leaving the emergency room just a short while ago. She took some tests, and she is still feeling ill. And uh, she has been told to go see her doctor tomorrow morning. And she hopes to find out whether she is the latest victim in the next few days. Reporting live in Hayward, Robert Honda, Channel 5, 
Eyewitness News. Robert, they'll probably have to do some kind of culture to test her for it, but was she absolutely sure this is the only thing that was different that she had? Yeah, well, uh, one, once again, she was somebody that was visiting that area a lot, so she always had kind of a routine, and she was, as she claims, a uh, regular Adwala drinker, and she claims that she didn't have anything else to drink or eat during the time that she drank the Adwala and the time she started to feel ill. Okay, we'll find out tomorrow, then, or the next day. Thanks very much, Robert. Okay. So here's what we know at this hour. At least 13 people in Washington state have become ill with E. coli bacteria. Researchers have linked 10 of those cases to apple juice made by the Adwala company. The Half Moon Bay firm has ordered all of its apple-based products removed from store shelves. The recall affects all seven states where Odwala products are sold as well as British Columbia. Health officials are urging consumers not to buy the juice and if they have purchased it, not to drink it. Coming up next, tonight's other major story, the huge bay oil spill that keeps on spreading. Take a look at what we found when we got out on the bay this afternoon, and there's a whole lot more. We've got a live report next. Also ahead, a miracle comeback by these fish that's hit a man-made obstacle. Then, one of the most bitter battles of this election season tonight, the two candidates put down the mud and talk issues. That's coming up at 10.30 on Eyewitness News. Closed captioning is brought to you as a public service by the makers of Advil, advanced medicine for pain. No non-prescription pain reliever has been proven more effective or longer lasting than Advil. I'm forgetting something. Uh, doctors, in an ideal world, it would be easy to shop for a doctor. And now, Thanks to five great hospitals, it is. Mommy, I want that one. Timmy, let's call the gynecologist. Clean up aisle five. Put the in here. It was over in a moment, but the pain lasts forever. President Clinton stood up and helped pass the Brady Bill. It wasn't about politics. The president had the integrity to do what was right. When I hear people question the president's character, I say, look what he's done. Look at the lives that Brady Bill will save. A few words about Chevy Blazer. You're familiar with Blazer's 4x4 rugged side, the 190 horsepower and Instatrack four-wheel drive? That's the sports part. But Blazer adapts just as naturally to the city. With its ample cargo capacity, it can carry kids, dogs, or even a washing machine with ease. That's the utility part. Best of all, with custom express delivery, you can get just the four-door Blazer you want, in most cases within 24 hours. That's the express part. Test drive a Chevy Blazer today and park it in your garage tomorrow. Proposition 217 promoters say they want to soak the rich. Rich? Prop 217 hurts the small businesses that create most of the jobs. 217 is a $700 million tax increase, retroactive with no accountability on how the money would be spent. Before raising taxes another dime, the bureaucrats should cut the waste and do more with our billions they already have. Vote no on 217. Taxes are already too high. Uh, doctors, in an ideal world, it would be easy to shop for a doctor. And now, it is. The best place for news in the best place on earth. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. It's been about 48 hours since we first began following the spread of the oil spill on San Francisco Bay, and tonight the contamination seems to be growing. Late today, the Coast Guard sent helicopters up for an aerial survey. What they saw was a three-mile ribbon of oil stretching from Pier 70 north past the Golden Gate Bridge. By this morning, the danger had spread to the shore, and the oil on beaches caught some Bay Area residents off guard. Channel 5's Jeffrey Schaub joins us live now with the story of some people who suddenly found their pets were victims of the oil spill. Jeffrey? That's right, Anna. They've shut these beaches down for good reason. I want to show you something. You see these black gobules of uh, what is oil along at Chrissy Field Beach here? It's all along the entire shoreline. It's affected mammals in the water, and for some people, it's come very close to home. 
It was early this morning. Mary Pound and her four-month-old puppy were walking along the beach here at Chrissy Field. Her dog jumped in the water. We knew there had been an oil spill, but we weren't even thinking in connection of Chrissy Field. I knew it had been down at China Basin. And at 7.30 this morning, it was kind of drizzling. There was no smell whatsoever. There were no signs warning us. There were other people on the beach with dogs, a lot of other people on the beach with dogs. And it never even dawned on us. Never dawned on her that Kojo would end up covered with oil. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> Tonight, Kojo lies at a San Francisco animal hospital on IV, along with two other dogs that were soaked with oil. There's a variety of symptoms. The most common ones are vomiting and diarrhea, but it can cause neurologic problems. They can become disoriented and weak. Kojo was lucky. Her owner got her to a veterinarian quickly. But when we visited Chrissy Field late today, we found several dog owners unaware of the oil problem. I think that's terrible. I'm certainly glad you stopped me to save my dogs from having the same bad experience. As we walked the beach, you could see yards and yards of beaded up oil everywhere. No surprise, aerials from this Coast Guard helicopter show that the oil that spilled from the Cape Mohican now reaches as far north as Marin County. Tonight, the National Park Service closed down nine beaches from Fort Funston in Marin to Chrissy Field and Ocean Beach in San Francisco. Initial reports that re we received indicated that oil was not likely to, to impact our beaches, but it spread um, far beyond anyone's expectations. Meanwhile, the toll on wildlife worsens. This oil-soaked gull struggles but is unable to reach up onto a pier. Out with the Coast Guard, Channel 5's Ken Bastida scoops up another bird. He's full of oil. He's full of oil. U.S. Fish and Wildlife officials say as many as 200 birds and fish may be affected by the spill, perhaps many more as the slick reaches more Bay Area shores. Now, we have some important information for you. If you should happen to spot a bird or a mammal that's been injured or covered with oil, please call the telephone number that's on your screen right now. That'll put you in touch with the Coast Guard. They'll get in touch with the proper authorities to come out and try to uh, rescue that uh, animal or bird. Reporting live from Christie Field Beach in San Francisco, Jeffrey Schaub, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Jeffrey, did you see any warning signs telling people that that stuff is hazardous and toxic? You know, when we came out here this afternoon, there were no signs. We asked the Park Service why it took so long to get them out here. They said at first they didn't figure it was going to be a problem. Then they started getting reports. They sent some park rangers out. Actually, the signs were put out here about a half an hour ago. We saw some rangers come out and post them. Okay, thanks very much. We've been following the Bay Area oil spill story closely since it started on Monday. Tonight, we'll show you what we discovered this afternoon during our own investigation. As the oil spread, cleanup crews worked furiously with skimmers, high-pressure hoses, and absorbent pads. They attacked every oil slick they could find. But when we took a boat out for a look, we found slicks crews didn't know about. Here's what Channel 5's Ken Bastida found when he went in for a closer right, look. Let me show you how thick the oil is. This is inside the boom. We're going to dip a rag in there. Look at this stuff. I mean, it is absolutely as thick as peanut butter on that side of the boom. The massive cleanup effort continues tomorrow. There's a chance crews will need volunteers to help clean up the shoreline, so keep watching Eyewitness News for more on that. Here are some of the other stories making news around the Bay tonight. A fire in a PG&E substation cut power to San Jose International Airport this evening and left more than 6,000 customers without power across north central San Jose. The airport was forced to start rerouting incoming flights after lights on the airfield went out. The lights are back on now, and the airport is trying to get things back on schedule. We began releasing water through the floodgates at the Los Gatos Dam in Santa Clara. Once the water level drops by about 60 percent, they'll get started on a major maintenance project. Workers will replace two mechanical release gates, just like the ones that failed at Folsom Dam. You may remember when those gates failed last summer, half of the reservoir's water was lost. A high-speed chase involving two carjacking suspects ended when they crashed on the Bay Bridge today. Police say the two men took the car in the Mission District this morning. Officers spotted the car this afternoon. After a short chase, the car slammed into a barrier on the Bay Bridge. Police say they caught one suspect at the scene. They captured the other after he tried to run from the crash site.
A retail giant is back in Oakland. The new Sears store opened on Broadway where the Emporium store used to be. This comes four years after Sears closed its Telegraph Avenue store. The store features the tools and appliances for which Sears is known, but managers say this Oakland store is really catering to women shoppers. The store employs more than 200 people. 80% of them are from Oakland. You can call him a musician, a comedian, a clown, or one of the original flower children of the Haight-Ashbury. But today, Wavy Gravy was all politics. Well, mostly politics. This Bay Area original campaigned in Berkeley today for his favorite presidential candidate, Nobody. He's been a nobody supporter since the election of 1976. As Wavy points out, who lowered your taxes this year? And who keeps campaign promises? Only his candidate, nobody. <laughs> Still ahead tonight, our very own Kate Kelly is going to introduce us to a very important person. Her newborn son, Matthew. You'll meet him at about 1040. Meteorologist Brian Sussman here. Some awesome video on tap for you later. Plus, how much rain has fallen in your house over the past couple of days and how much snow has fallen in them there hills? Total weather later. There's a place in the East Bay where things are happening that no one can explain. Where people are seeing beings who died long ago. Want to see a true spirit of the Bay? Come with us tomorrow night at 6 and 10 on Channel 5. It's the number one new drama of the season. This is my shot. Can knowing the future save an athlete's life? He's not going to make it through this game. Just change it back. I can't. It doesn't work that way. Early edition, CBS Saturday. What makes this Dodge Caravan such a value is our family value package. For no extra charge, you get seven passenger seating, security drawer, air conditioning, and more. Plus, you also get seats that roll, cup holders, and storage spaces, even a great stereo. All for just $17,920. But what makes this family value package so valuable is where you'll find it. In America's best-selling minivan, Dodge Caravan. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. I'm against Proposition 211 because I bought Mr. Keene's junk bonds. The bondholders received not more than 50 or 60 percent of the money that would do them. The lawyers are getting the vast majority of the funds as opposed to the individual seniors. Proposition 211 creates a loophole by which the lawyers can circumvent the federal law. Now, if Proposition 211 was in force at that time, we might have been left with 25 percent. No on 211. There's a network that stretches from one end of California to the other. It connects over 33,000 doctors, over 3,000 pharmacies, and 370 hospitals, and joins them for one goal, to protect the health of more than a million members. It's HealthNet, one of the biggest and most highly rated healthcare companies in the state, and California's health plan. To prove our Kia could give a Toyota a run for its money, we conducted a little car chase, Hollywood style, for a grueling 100,000 miles. With a more powerful engine, we tailed that Corolla from heaven to hell to hellish. Yep, we went everywhere that Toyota went, but priced about 3,000 less, there's one place we didn't go. Over budget. Kia. Because it's about time everyone had a well-made car. Get up to 1250 cash back on a new Sophia. We first told you about salmon making a comeback in San Jose's Guadalupe River on Monday night. But runoff from the rain this week has made the swim upstream nearly impossible. The river runs through downtown and some of the most industrial areas of the city. And now, the unlikely salmon habitat has become an uninviting one. Channel 5's Tony Russomano explains. For a generation that grew up thinking of urban rivers as dead zones of slow-moving sludge and pollution, What's popping up out of the Guadalupe River in San Jose today seems nothing short of a miracle. Watch the waterfall closely. A huge 36-inch Chinook salmon is fighting its way up the river to spawn. Only recently have salmon returned to the Guadalupe, and rarely have they come this far upstream. But the fish can't get through an old concrete channel, despite words of encouragement shouted by the head of a salmon restoration group who was shooting this home video. in this area. 
I stood with Roger Castillo in the River Channel as he searched for more salmon to document with his video camera. More evidence to persuade someone to remove this jagged concrete obstacle. The fish that do make it over the concrete ledge can't get enough power in the shallow channel to make it over the next concrete beam. It just makes my heart go out to these fish because, you know, they've already endured a lot just getting up to the little points where they had to get up in the downtown area. The salmon that don't make it past this point will spawn downstream, providing they don't kill themselves on the jagged concrete. The Valley Water District says they didn't put this structure in and it's not their responsibility to take it out, but any citizens group could apply to state fish and game for a permit to break up the concrete and help the salmon. In San Jose, Tony Russomano, Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 10. Tony also tells us the number of salmon has been sharply decreasing throughout California. So an increase anywhere is notable, especially in an urban river like the Guadalupe. While well, President Clinton is set to make another Bay Area visit tomorrow, he's campaigning tonight in the Southwest. He spoke to a crowd of college students in Denver before heading to Phoenix. The president saying his policies are responsible for the nation's healthy economy. Tomorrow afternoon, he's scheduled to visit Oakland's Jack London Square. We'll have live coverage of the event here on Eyewitness News at 5 and at 6. GOP challenger Bob Dole is hammering at the president's character while campaigning in the South. Tonight, he stopped in New Orleans, where he told supporters four more years of Clinton is scarier than Halloween. Mr. Dole also spoke about the controversy involving some questionable campaign contributions to the Democratic National Party. He accused President Clinton of knowing about them for some time. Ross Perot is also going after the president on the character issue. At a speech in Philadelphia tonight, the third party candidate challenged President Clinton to an election eve debate. Perot says he wants to candidly discuss the ethical controversy surrounding the Clinton administration. He says the president needs to say whether he's going to pardon those convicted in the Whitewater scandal. We've got a full 30 minutes of news still ahead for you, including new recommendations on how to put your baby to bed safely. And the search for clues in the crash of a jet that narrowly missed an apartment building. And up next, our Bay Area Spotlight focuses on the mud-covered North Bay campaign that's key to the fate of Newt Gingrich. First, here's another look at the drinks included in the Odwalla recall. To prove how easy it is to park a new BMW 750iL, we chose a particularly difficult parking space. But thanks to BMW's park distance control system, you know exactly how close you're getting to an object. So nothing is harmed. No matter how precious the work of art you're trying to protect. I had the most delightful meal yesterday. Really now? Freshly baked with a flaky crust, juicy chunks of chicken, lovely peas, lovely carrots. Glory be, what was it? Chicken pot pie. Pot pie? At KFC, our chunky chicken pot pie is so good, some people may never believe it. I'll be seeing you in confession, Michael. Everybody needs KFC. To make you a believer, for a limited time, our chunky chicken pot pie is just $2.99. He's not just another guy in a business suit. He's David Duke, former head of the Ku Klux Klan. And he's come to California to support Prop 209. 209 would close education and job opportunities to women and minorities, close magnet schools, lock women out of government jobs, and equal opportunity. Newt Gingrich, Pat Buchanan, and David Duke want you to vote yes on 209. President Clinton and Colin Powell say you should vote no. Don't be fooled. David Duke didn't come to California to end discrimination. Vote no on 209. I don't know most of the people driving Saturdays, but I sure know about half of them anyway. There's my daughter and Aunt Sally. She must go to potluck supper. Hi, Sal. <laughs> I wonder what she made this time. There comes George and, and Kate. Oh, yeah, that's Sally's sister. Yeah. Now she's the sixth one that bought the Saturday. Hi. There's Barbara, There's Barbara and, and Mike. Mike. My daughter and daughter, uh, son in law. They were the first ones to buy the Saturday. Beep your heart. Now they got a second Hi. one. Hi. There's Susie. Her daughter's going to buy a Saturday. Watch the road, too. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball players who spit in an umpire's face. 
politicians who shut down the government to get even. Congressman Bill Baker says of the Navy tailhook scandal, some lady decides she's a victim and we all pay for it in higher hotel costs. Bill Baker calls a group of high school students abortion survivors. And then just weeks ago, Bill Baker leaps from a stage at a political rally and attacks a protester. Don't we deserve better? The best place for news in the best place on earth. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. One of the most controversial measures on Tuesday's ballot, both in the state and in the Bay Area, faces growing opposition tonight. A field poll shows Prop 209, the Anti-Affirmative Action Initiative, leads by five points. That's down from a 15-point lead just a couple of weeks ago. The measure would end affirmative action programs in state government and in education. But a poll in the Bay Area shows Prop 209 holding its strong lead. Our exclusive Value Star KPIX Voice of the Bay survey has the measure leading by 14 points. It also shows that 20% of Bay Area voters are undecided. Why are the polls so different? More than half of the people surveyed say they're not familiar with the content of the initiative. That may be because Prop 209 uses the phrase special preferences, never mentioning affirmative action in those words. When asked whether affirmative action works in California, almost 50% of those surveyed said it has made things better. Next Tuesday, Bay Area voters could well determine whether Newt Gingrich remains Speaker of the House. Two local congressional races could be the final test last night we were in the East Bay for the Bill Baker Ellen Tauscher race. Tonight, we head north. It's a classic political matchup. A disciplined Republican incumbent and a passionate and inexperienced Democratic challenger who just happens to be from San Francisco's preeminent political family. And in the race for the first congressional district, the candidates aren't pulling any punches. Frank Riggs, we gave him a second chance, and he's let us down again. Where do you stand with Frank Riggs and the vast majority of us on the North Coast or Michaela Alioto and her San Francisco friends? I think that one of the wonderful things about this election is that people do have a choice. A very, in my opinion, a very clear one, but we are very different. I really do understand the concerns, the needs, the interests of the people I represent. I think they understand that I work hard every day trying to, to make their lives better. Frank Riggs knows how fickle the voters of the vast first congressional district can be. He's won, lost, and won the seat again all in the past six years. Stretching from the redwood forests of the far north to the Napa Valley wine country. The sheer diversity of California one makes it the most volatile congressional seat in the country. And this time around, the winner will help determine whether Newt Gingrich keeps his job as speaker. For Democrats to take control of the Congress, they are going to have to win a seat like Frank Riggs' seat. Uh, for Republicans to protect their majority in the House, they're going to have to win seats like Riggs. Democrat Michaela Alioto is the granddaughter of San Francisco Mayor Joe Alioto. She worked for Vice President Al Gore in Washington and enjoys the backing of organized labor and many environmental groups. Paralyzed in a skiing accident when she was 13, at 28, she wants to be the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. I believe in education. I believe in Medicare. I believe in protection for working families. Uh, and I'm running against someone who has voted contrary to most of those beliefs and to most of my stands in those areas. Okay. Republican Frank Riggs voted for spending cuts and a balanced budget. He voted against the assault weapons ban and against new EPA regulations. He's drawn criticism from environmental groups, but has support from business and from timber companies that provide jobs in the district. I believe in a proper balance between jobs and the environment, and I believe you can protect the environment without harming jobs or without uh, in, intruding on private property rights. The campaign has been marked by charges and counter charges. Alioto says Riggs votes against social programs and environmental protection. Riggs says Alioto moved to the district just to run for office. He calls her a carpetbagger and a San Francisco liberal. Am I a San Francisco liberal? Yeah. I think that when people start calling people 
uh, names and when they start labeling people, it's because they don't want to they don't want to deal with the real issues out there. Alioto accuses Riggs of misspending eight thousand dollars to visit the district. Riggs says it was legal. Alioto's brother and cousin were caught trying to get Riggs press releases using stationery taken from a San Francisco TV station. And a Riggs campaign commercial linked his opponent with Polly Class's murderer. But what about Michaela Alioto? Do you guys support the death penalty for Richard Allen Davis? Yeah. Is that what you asked? Uh -huh. I'm not, I am not in favor of the death penalty. Polly's father, Mark Class, accused Riggs of exploiting his daughter for political gain. By the way, that's Mark Class in a Clinton campaign commercial. I personally believe you, you can't have politics without principle, that you should not put political expediency before political uh, principle. And I think it is our responsibility as people who are running to show that, that this can be a very honorable position that it is about the people, that it is about real and true representation, and that we can effectuate things in a strong and in a positive way. Next Tuesday, you can depend on Eyewitness News for complete coverage of this and all the races here at home and around the country. We'll begin with CBS coverage at 4 in the afternoon and continue right through to midnight, if not longer. We've heard a number of warnings lately about airbags. A little later, we'll tell you why pregnant women are being added to the list of victims. Up next, meteorologist Brian Sussman with a spectacular look at the end of our rainy day, as well as tomorrow's microclimate forecast. Tonight, actress Isabella Rossellini and director Gary Marshall. And this Friday, we're coming to your town. Don't miss Dave's road trip to Boston, only on CBS. Chelsea Clinton travels the world and goes to fancy parties. But it's no fun when Jay Leno and David Letterman make jokes about your family. The best, worst life a 16-year-old girl could ever have. Day and Date profiles Chelsea Clinton. Day and Date, tomorrow at 4, here on Channel 5. Frank Riggs promised us reform and no more business as usual. After promising he wouldn't, Riggs took a congressional pay raise of 36000 a year. He promised to clean up Washington ethics, but Riggs bounced checks in the congressional bank scandal. Riggs promised not to take money from big oil or big timber, but he did. Now he is one of the worst environmental records. Frank Riggs is so close to the NRA, he voted to repeal the ban on military-style assault weapons. Call Frank Riggs. Tell him business as usual isn't good enough. We want real reform. Every once in a blue moon, something new comes along that scrambles your preconceptions and turns out to be a whole new omelet. Like whoever thought you could say luxury car and fun in the same sentence. Well, we did. In fact, we said it in one word, Katera, a proud new addition to our luxury family. It's the caddy that zigs. dollar scan could have saved what Stephen lost. Um, not only vision, but behavior. He's got cerebral palsy. He'll always be delayed. This is Ralph Nader. Don't let the giant HMOs and insurance companies mislead you about Proposition 216. Get the facts for yourself. Read the official voter handbook and make up your own mind. What would happen if the Democrats controlled Congress and the White House? Been there, done that, remember? The largest tax increase in history, more wasteful Washington spending, a government-run health care scheme. The liberal special interests aligned with Clinton desperately want to buy back control of Congress. Here, they think Ellen Tauscher will vote their way. If we give the special interests a blank check in Congress, who's going to represent us? You know, the forecast tonight is as important as a weekend forecast for parents because oh, trick-or-treaters yes. want to know. Little kid's going to be out and about tomorrow night and just in time, the storm winding down. But not before we had a major dumpage up in the high Sierra. Dumpage? Yes, that is a weather term <laughs> used in weather offices throughout the western United States. 12 inches or more of snow at the ski resorts in and around Lake Tahoe. And you know what? A pretty healthy dose of snow in the southern mountains of our state, too. 
These pictures taken in the San Bernardino Mountains east of Los Angeles. Onward to the San Joaquin Valley, the last stages of a tornado spawned from some thunderstorms about one o'clock this afternoon. See it? It did some minor damage near Olive Avenue and Highway 99 in Fresno. That is the real deal. Yeah. Meantime, in the Bay Area, the commute started out as anticipated on a wet note, though the rain did go on to linger about <clears throat> six hours longer than we were expecting. Good forecast, bad timing. Our time-lapse camera was spectacular today. We're, of course, looking from San Francisco towards the Golden Gate, the clouds backwashing around the storm center from northeast to southwest. Cool. And the video beauty shot of the night. Cameraman Joe Beltramini shoots and scores. He parked on a narrow shoulder of Devil's Slide, taking a risk to bring us this. That's some nice stuff. All right, here we go. We're going to show you what's been happening. Low center, the storm center, now moving well to our east. On radar, we're seeing low-level moisture, sometimes referred to as ground clutter, Central Valley, in the Bay Area. So this is not rain. Still snowing, though. Right here in the Sierra, over into Nevada, and a few showers lingering in extreme Southern California. Temperatures around the Bay Area today, we're not going to do. Instead, we're going to do rain totals over the last two days. Because they have been very, very heavy. Almost an inch of rain. San Francisco, you get to the Santa Clara Valley. We saw over an inch in Morgan Hill, an inch on the nose in Los Gatos, almost an inch in San Jose, nearly an inch in Livermore today. Over the last two days, I should say. Oakland, over an inch of rain. Either side of half an inch coming out of Walnut Creek and Concord. Vallejo, 1.65 over the last couple of days. Also, we've seen almost two inches out of Sonoma, over an inch and a half in Napa, over an inch in Nevada. Here's what's happening. High pressure building in to the far eastern Pacific or the western United States. This high is trying to grab on up in the Arctic region, and when that happens... Those fair weather systems can be hard to move out. So we're in for an improving trend, which seems to last. One exception, ground fog, Thule fog, forming in valleys around the Bay Area tonight. Drive carefully tomorrow morning. It will linger, but finally burn off by afternoon. Temperatures recovering into the low to mid-60s for tomorrow. Extended outlook, finally back into the 70s. Oh, we cannot forget this. This is big stuff, clear and chilly. Bundle them up tomorrow evening. We'll see the 70s returning latter part of the weekend. Our friends in the High Sierra will see those snow showers end overnight. Finally, we'll take a look at tonight's sky. Something special about that star. Yeah, it's one named Matthew. Matthew, son of Kate Kelly. Her husband, Tom. And Matthew's big brother, Jack. Katie's been off on maternity leave, and now we know why. Matthew came into this world yesterday afternoon. And that little guy has a great family. Congratulations, Kate and Tom. Oh, isn't he cute? <laughs> it's wonderful. When we come back, what a supermodel left behind in San Francisco's Planet Hollywood. Then, can the San Jose Sharks get even in the early stages of the hockey season? This is Lois Melconi and KCBS Morning News Anchor. Set your clock radio now to KCBS 740 AM and wake up to the Bay Area's number one morning radio program. All news, all the time. KCBS All News 74. Senate candidate Jeff Smith says Dick Rainey's a right-wing monster. That doesn't wash, says the San Francisco Chronicle. Rainey's a moderate. Jeff Smith says Dick Rainey opposes the assault weapons ban. Don't believe it. Dick Rainey is a former sheriff who supports the ban on assault weapons. He voted to toughen the law against concealed weapons and wrote the law to keep guns away from kids. Dick Rainey is endorsed by Crime Victims United and every major police group in California. One of the most decent people you'll ever meet. Dick Rainey for Senate. Sure, it has tons of legroom and cargo space, but with its sporty 1.8 liter 16 valve engine and terrific handling, people like to drive it just for the fun of it. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Mirage Coupe. You think your grandpa will ever bring back your car? The 1997 Mirage Coupe for Mitsubishi. Built for living. 
We should be judged on merit, not by gender or the color of our skin. Job quotas and preferences are wrong. Proposition 209 ends quotas and special treatment, but Bill Clinton opposes Proposition 209, just like he opposed Prop 187. Proposition 209 is only 37 words, and it says we shall not discriminate. It's right for California. Bill Clinton is wrong to oppose Proposition 209. Let's end all discrimination. Vote yes on Proposition 209. Introducing the 97 Grand Cherokee. Lease one for just $2.97 a month. For the first time, an airbag has been linked to the death of a fetus. USA Today reports it happened during a low-speed collision in Georgia. The pregnant woman was driving and wearing her seatbelt. She received only bruises. In the past, airbags have been linked to the deaths of small children. Safety advocates want laws that would require airbags to have on and off switches. The American Academy of Pediatrics issued guidelines on the best way to prevent sudden infant death syndrome. The Academy says children should be put to sleep on their backs. Previously, the policy was to put babies on their sides or on their backs, but now new research shows children sleeping on their sides can roll over on their stomachs, increasing chances for SIDS. In news from around the nation tonight, a former FBI official faces up to 10 years in prison after pleading guilty to obstruction of justice. In a deal with prosecutors, E. Michael Cahoe today admitted that he destroyed a report that criticized the FBI's role in a deadly siege in Ruby Ridge, Idaho in 1992. A federal marshal and the wife and son of separatist Randy Weaver were killed. Prosecutors say Cahoe destroyed the documents to keep them from Weaver's attorneys. All four people aboard a corporate jet were killed when the Gulf Stream 4 crashed moments after takeoff from a small airport north of Chicago. The jet narrowly missed an apartment complex, but wreckage fell on the parking lot, setting fire to several cars and a boat. One eyewitness said he saw flames coming from the plane before it crashed. Striking General Motors workers braved 40-degree weather on picket lines today. Union workers at plants in Wisconsin and Indiana have walked out over local issues. But GM workers across the country have been working without a contract since Monday. Last week, GM workers in Canada returned to work after a three-day strike. One of the world's best-known supermodels came to San Francisco today to sell what she knows best, beauty tips. Cindy Crawford paid a visit to Planet Hollywood. She donated a copy of her new book, Cindy Crawford's Basic Face, to the restaurant. Crawford said the book is a course on Makeup 101. She says it includes everyday tips on applying lipstick, eyeshadow, and other cosmetics. Updates on Young and Gerbach. Game six for the lasers, but first, Ann Fouts has the shark story. Does it have a happy ending? Yeah, and Mac, I have a little mold, but you just Do can't. You? It's, it's in there somewhere. Yes, the sharks are uh, becoming a very entertaining team, much better than they were last year. Owen Nolan and Darren Turcott have now combined to score eight goals in two games, and the sharks have arrived at the 500 mark. Second period action, it's one nothing Calgary. Todd Gill will one-time it, and he hits the post, and Nolan is there to poke it in, tie the game at one. Check out the replay. Nolan, one of the league's top scorers, continues his superb play as the Sharks were looking for their first win at home over Calgary since 1994. Still in the second period now, check out Ulf Dahlen as he races down the right side. He's going to headman the pass to Turcott, and Turcott beats Trevor Kidd for the game winner. Nolan added an empty netter for a 3-1 San Jose victory. Kelly Rudy is the winning goalie as the Sharks improve to 5-5-3. Five, five, and three. Also in the NHL, Florida has wrapped up an unbeaten first month of play. Wayne Gretzky had two assists in the Rangers' win and has now scored in 13 straight games. The Lasers hosted the Power of Portland in tonight in an American Basketball League game in San Jose. The Lasers have the ball here, but Michelle Marciniak will steal it and put in two. San Jose led 40-35 at the half. Good scramble underneath and former Stanford star Anita Kaplan will get two. She led all scores with 17 points. The power, though, rallied after intermission to win 70-64. This is Marciniak with an impressive two. She had 16 points tonight, more than 2,400 on hand for the game. San Jose is 3-3. Three and three. 
A third base coach has made it to the dugout, and a dugout man has received a big honor. Tony La Russa of the Cardinals has been named Major League Manager of the Year by the Associated Press. La Russa won this uh, award in Chicago with the White Sox and, of course, in Oakland. Terry Francona, an outfielder and first baseman for 10 years, has been named Manager of the Phillies. He was a third base coach for the Tigers this past season. Francona made one pitching appearance in his career and fanned the A's Stan Javier in 1989. You might remember he was also a minor league manager of a very mediocre outfielder named Michael Jordan. You get the feeling we get more medical reports from Santa Clara than the Russian press gets from Moscow on Yeltsin. Anyway, uh, Steve Young and Elvis Gerbach should be able to play Sunday night in New Orleans. Yeltsin is listed as doubtful. On another front, I mentioned to George Seifert this afternoon, I thought 6-2 and two was a pretty good mark, all things considered, but the coach disagreed. I'm actually disappointed because I think that, uh, you know, we, we should have played much better against Carolina. I don't know what happened. That ball game was you know, kind of an embarrassment. And then uh, we should have won the Green Bay game, you know, uh, coach's folly and, uh, you know, try to be Newt Rockney or Woody Hayes or something. And uh, so just being a 49er coach, and it, it just that, that one didn't work out. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we won a couple of close ones, and the team's showing some, some scrap to it. We're, we're not as polished. We're not as in sync as you, you want to be. And, and we've got to, to start now making a move in that direction despite the injuries. Really, the injuries really can't be a, a, a focal point or an excuse. Beside the quarterbacks, the coach has a lot of other injured players to worry about. But how about you, coach? How are you feeling? Actually, I had a headache yesterday, and, and my stomach's a little upset this morning. But other than that, I'll, I, I, I think I'll go through walkthrough. And, and as far as the, the padded part of practice, I don't know yet. Tough guy, that Seifert. It's a safe bet he'll be at full strength on the sidelines Sunday night. The Chiefs and Broncos didn't exactly part as friends Sunday afternoon in Denver. It all had to do with a legal but almost lethal block. Check it out. Dale Carter of the Chiefs in white there. Lays a block on former Raider Lionel Washington. Washington suffered ligament damage. But KC head coach Marty Schottenheimer wasn't apologizing to anyone. I have never at any time in my coaching career suggested to any player to go get somebody or try to hurt somebody. Because I know the sacrifices that you got to make to play in this league. And as I said before, and this is it, I resent the statement that what we do is unethical because our players are not. I repeat, they are not doing anything illegal or unethical. Now the case is closed, and let's go on about our business. Not so fast. It turned out Carter was taunting Washington and later delivered a similar block on Denver's Darius Johnson. Today, Schottenheimer did apologize to Bronco head coach Mike Shanahan, and that is a rarity these days in the NFL. I Anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Dan. With Halloween so close, we have plenty of pumpkin news to finish off this newscast. But first, tonight's winning Super Lotto numbers. Are you ready? Up for grabs, a jackpot of $20 million. This lobbyist was tested to see which campaign finance reform is tougher on special interests. Prop 208 or Prop 212? Note this reaction when told 208 lets fat cats give big money to politicians. But Prop 212 limits them to $100. And 208 keeps the tax write-off for whining and dining politicians, while 212 bans gifts from lobbyists. The results? 212's tougher. Vote yes on 212. There's a global company that can help you reach overseas markets as if they were right next door. A company that can speed packages across the Atlantic or the Pacific for less than you'd probably pay to send them across town. The U.S. Postal Service offers global priority mail around the country and around the world. No one delivers like the U.S. Postal Service. New York's financial giants oppose Prop 211. Wall Street, investment banks, the insurance companies, Charles Keating's accountants and top executives are spending $25 million to stop Prop 211. Why? To avoid punishment for securities fraud. Don't be stampeded by Wall Street money pouring into California. Give yourself a fighting chance. Protect your retirement savings. The American Association of Retired Persons and the California Organization of Police and Sheriffs support Prop 211. You should too. Yes on 211. 
You've heard Ford Explorer called versatile, unrivaled, and America's best-selling sport utility. Now there's one more word to describe Explorer. Affordable. Because now you can lease a 4x4 Explorer for $3.29 a month, including air conditioning, dual airbags, power windows, and locks. Just $3.29 a month for a 4x4. Ford Explorer. Call it affordable. Versatile. Best-selling. But call it yours for $3.29 a month for 24 months. Only at your participating Ford dealer. High taxes are a concern to Californians' families, but Michaela Elioto supported a $243 billion tax increase on all of our families and businesses. She even said to tax Social Security. Frank Riggs voted for tax relief for working families and to lower taxes on seniors. Riggs wants to increase our take-home pay and put more money into families' budgets. Frank Riggs, lower taxes, larger paychecks, more jobs. Michaela Elioto, higher taxes on working families, more spending by Washington bureaucrats. You've heard of carving pumpkins, smashing pumpkins, even pumpkin pie. But pumpkin bowling is something you have to see. Waynesburg College students got into the Halloween spirit with their annual pumpkin games. This year's games brought out a new event, pumpkin bowling. Students taking turns hurling the huge pumpkins at bowling pins. And what does the winner receive? Why, a golden pumpkin, freshly spray painted, of course. Today's event was sponsored by the campus radio station. Now, if you'd only do the Tony. All right, just get that going. Well, it's not the end of tonight's pumpkin fun. No, no, <laughs> no. The Eyewitness Newsreel also into it. Newsreel's Halloween Eve edition begins in Charlottesville, Virginia, where scuba divers took pumpkin carving to new depths. They got out their scuba gear and their knives to fashion some soggy jack-o'-lanterns. The divers were happy with their work, but the local fish had to cope with the floating pumpkin goo. In Reno, Nevada, a high school physics class learned a lesson in pumpkin propulsion. Catapults, slingshots, and crossbows were among the devices used to heave the hefty squash. They've been doing it for eight years, but not just for the love of science. Local businesses give the winner a $1,500 jackpot. And finally, Newsreel spreads its wings in Orem, Utah, where Becky Olson is known as the Bat Lady. This is Olivia. Becky got into bats while trying to figure out what to do with her biology degree. She has learned some interesting facts about how bats like their mealworms prepared. Some bats have to have the mealworm heads popped off. Ooh, here's to a batty Halloween from the Eyewitness Newsreel. More than we wanted to know. And that's it for Eyewitness News at 10. Good night and good luck from all of us at Eyewitness News. Good night. <laughs> This has been a presentation of Channel 5 Eyewitness News, the best place for news in the best place on earth.